Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going great and I'm having fun. I'm in Luminar 3 today and I am messing around with the photos. So I did about five videos last week. Ooh, man, it was, uh, it was a lot going on. Uh, but I was having fun and I just couldn't stop doing stuff. Um, so I'm picking up the pace a little bit, uh, probably during the month of July. I'm going to be traveling some in August, but I'm home mostly in July. And uh, I'm just trying to get some things done because there's a lot I want to talk about. And I've historically been on the pace of about two videos a week. And I feel like I'll just never get it done. So I'm not committing to always doing like three, four, five videos a week. But in the short term, I'm in high speed mode. So let's get going. Um, okay, so Luminar 3, I am right here. And I've already cropped this photo. This was shot on the street in London. And I've said this in other videos, and that is I take a lot of snapshots where I just kind of take a photo of a place or a scene just because I like it. And it helps me kind of cement my memories, and I just kind of enjoy doing it. And so it's not really a throwaway shot, um, but it's not something that I would say, wow, that's amazing, you know, golly, how did you ever make something so beautiful or whatever. Um, it's just a regular street scene in London, and I'll be returning to London uh, in August, so I'm really excited about that. But um, just walking around street, uh, street scene, street shot, whatever you want to call it, and here I am. So what I wanted to do is kind of dive into textures. I've done a few videos that are kind of like deep dives on Luminar filters. I thought I'd dive into the texture filter. So I'm going to say add filter, and I'm going to get the texture overlay. If I can find it, there it is. I don't guess I got it. There it is. Um, and uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to dive into that and then uh, do some customization. So uh, texture overlay, as the name implies, it basically allows you to add a texture. The cool thing is you can kind of do this two ways in Luminar. You can go to layers and add new image layer and then go grab the texture and put it on. However, I prefer to use the texture overlay filter because it gives you the ability to, you can see here, you can flip things around, you can zoom and all that, and I'm gonna do a little bit of that. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna load texture. Now, I've got this Bisbee texture collection. I'm gonna use Bisbee 1, and it's gonna lay it on top. And it automatically comes in at uh, 50 in the amount, which is like the opacity. That's too much for me, by the way. I'm gonna take it down to like 25. Real quick, I want to do an aside. Um, this is not my texture collection. I got this from Ann McKinnell. I purchased it, I should say. Um, she's a great photographer. Um, I've never met her personally, but we've been social social media you know, uh, acquaintances for years. You can just go to annmckinnell.com, click on textures, and there's Bisbee right there. It sells for $9. Uh, amazing, um, uh, amazing texture collection, to be honest. And I've got my own texture collection. Um, but uh, at the same time, I, I like to support other artists, and these are beautiful. They look like watercolors. So anyway, you can see what they're all about. I'm going to close that, but if you want to check it out, just go to annmckinnell.com, click on textures, and um, if I can close that, um, that's where I got this texture. So um, one of the great things about this is you can keep the aspect ratio if they vary, um, but this is fine here. You can click this. That'll flip the texture um, on the horizontal plane, and this will flip the texture on the vertical plane. So I'm going to do both. Um, I've already reduced the amount to, to 25 from 50, and I'm going to zoom. That's the other cool thing you can do is you can just kind of zoom in. I'm going to zoom a little bit. The reason I did all that flipping and rotating and zooming is I kind of like the way the texture is lying on the street and in the sky. But here's the thing about textures is um, in addition to doing the the amount, you can do other things, right? Where you can come in and you can apply them with a brush, which is what I'm going to do. Um, and you can also come in here and, uh, not mask, you can change the blend mode. So you can come through and you, as you highlight, or excuse me, ah, I didn't mean to hit that. Um, as you go over the blend modes, let me go back to normal, so that's our default. Um, if I could get my mouse under control. As you hover over the blend mode, you can see what it will look like on the photo. Light and looks a little too light. Screen is usually pretty light. Soft light usually looks pretty good. You can kind of go through. That one's kind of interesting difference. Um, but I'm just going to go with normal. Um, so that's one option for making things look different. And the truth is, there's no right way to do it. It's all experimentation. The second thing I like to do is go into brush mode. And you can either paint in the texture. And you can just say, hey, I just want it in the sky. And you use your brush and paint it in. Um, in this case, I'm going to actually erase it. 
uh, because I think it's a little too heavy. I like it in the buildings, but mostly I want it to be more prominent in the sky. So I just take my opacity, and you can go you know, anywhere you want in the opacity. I'm gonna go like around 50%, and my brush is in right bracket key will increase the brush, left bracket key will decrease at least on a Mac. If you're on a Windows or a PC, I don't know if it's the same, but that's how it works for me. Um, so I'm in erase mode, and I've reduced the opacity, so that means I'm gonna erase, but I'm not gonna 100% erase, I'm gonna 50% erase. And so all I'm gonna do is go in here, and I wanna take that texture a little bit out of some of the trees and the buildings, just so I don't totally lose um, kind of what's in the scene, something like that. So maybe a little bit, uh, yeah, maybe something like that. I'll just say done, and there we go, so now, the before and the after. There's the before and there's the after. I've added the texture, but I've reduced the opacity, which is the amount slider. I've flipped it, rotated it, zoomed it, and then brushed it in, or actually brushed it out at a little bit varying opacity around the image. Again, just experimentation, do what you like. Um, the thing about textures is, this one in particular, it's got some cool colors, but as you can see, it's fairly bright. So it really brightened the image from that to that but I wanna go back and add in some contrast and things like that. So I'm gonna get a few filters here. I'm gonna start with tone. I gotta to look at my notes. I'm gonna get color balance, cause I love my color balance. Um, I'm gonna get golden hour, and I'm gonna get split toning. There we go. So let me close those. So tone, as let me just close texture filter. There we go, tone. I'm gonna bump up the contrast a bit. I gotta look at my notes. I don't remember how much. So I went about 60 here just creating more contrast. Also note that does a good job of bringing back some of the darkness that's in the scene, not in the sky, right? And that was one thing, the texture, it really lightened that, right? But now, um, oops, sorry, the texture, let me, the texture really lightened that. Uh, let me turn off that first, there we go, how about that? There it is with nothing on it, right? Added the texture, it really lightened that area. And then I added the tone and increasing that contrast really brought that back in. So I wanna have visibility into it. I don't wanna lose the scene because I'm adding the texture, if that makes sense. So next I was highlights uh, to a fairly decent negative and smart tone, I'm gonna to go up to like in the 30s, right? So getting a fairly balanced uh, image in terms of the light distribution and yet with the contrast, I can still see well into the scene, which I like. Color balance was next. I'm gonna start in the shadows. I'm gonna go kinda of to the blue there and kinda of to the blue here. And this is not a, a detailed tutorial about color balance. I don't really have time in this video. Um, I've got several videos about using that in Luminar. You can find those if I can remember to put a link up there. Um, but check it out, super powerful tool. And as you can see, it's gonna give you a lot of control over the color. I'm just doing these quick edits here. And in the highlights, Here's the bigger change. I'm gonna do this again with golden hour and split toning, and that is I wanna warm up the photo, create a more dramatic kind of sunset look, but with that texture. And so in the highlights, which is gonna be mostly in the sky, I'm gonna go pretty high on this color. So like 40, let's say 42. And I'm gonna go a little bit to the uh, that color and a little bit that direction. And so let me show you a color balance. There's before and there's after much more vibrant in terms of that pink. So I'm creating a sunset kind of look, which is what I wanna do. As you can see, it was sunset time of day, but this being London, there wasn't a big sunset, right? So it was kind of gray, overcast. Now it's kind of colorful, and I think that plays into the texture fairly well, personal opinion. Uh, golden hour, I'm just gonna give that a bit of a global pop uh, just to increase that, and then split toning. Uh, I am going about, uh, you know, like a 28 here, and let's see, da, 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 something like 30 or so. Again, uh, I'm not gonna go into split toning in detail. I've got a video here about split toning, but it allows you to take the highlights and the shadows separately and add a particular color hue and a saturation amount to that color hue in the shot, uh, highlights or shadows. It's incredibly powerful. I use it all the time and love it. Uh, I'm gonna go about 215, which is kind of in the blue, and a light amount of saturation there, like 20 or so. Um, and that's that, really. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Let me look. Yeah, I've got everything covered. In fact, maybe a little bit too blue in the uh, in the shadow, so I think I'll take that down 
just a tad there, not so high. And split tuning, as you can see, made a nice little difference. Not huge, but it pops a little bit more in the highlights because I have a higher saturation level. You can just, you know, do that if you want. I mean, hey, this is a texture. Therefore, just clearly by definition, if you didn't already think photography is art, when you add a texture to it, you're definitely in the realm of like art and being creative. So do whatever colors you want, it doesn't matter. That's why I'm so far off from reality. So if you want to jack that up really high and do something like that, do it, why not? Like, I kind of like that. In fact, I think I'm gonna go higher now, like 60. Um, but that's really it. I just kind of wanted to do, I don't know if this is really a deep dive on a texture filter. The truth is, you know, there's a lot you can do, but it's gonna depend on the texture and the photo in terms of what you wanna do. And you do have some flexibility uh, in terms of moving it around and that sort of thing, which is one of the reasons I like the texture overlay filter more so than I like adding a new image layer and sticking the texture on that way. You can do either one. I think this is a easier, more powerful way to do it. But I was able to take this uh, split screen, if you look, very different look. I think the colors, like even the lights on the bus and the reflections in the street, I don't know. Um, Obviously, I like sunset light. I mean, every photographer does probably. Uh, but I mean, I just think that just looks pretty cool. So that was a deep dive, if you will, into the texture filter and basically really just talking about the power and flexibility of using textures in Luminar because it gives you a lot of control over photo to do creative things. And also wanted to point out that texture collection that I use. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link down below to Ann's blog. Check it out. And um, you know, support your fellow artists. I think they're beautiful textures. I'm happy to have them. And uh, that's it, my friends. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back real soon with more stuff in Luminar, more stuff in On One, more stuff in Topaz. I'm busy. I'm getting things done. I hope you watch. Please tell your friends. I'm trying to get more people to watch, and I can't do it without your support. So like, share, subscribe, uh, all those kind of things. It helps a lot. You have no idea. So thank you again. And uh, that's it, my friends. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon and adios.